this Zooks thing, right? When I was yeah. 15 or something. But my dad, you know, he made the sculpty models, you know. Oh, wow. To, to draw from, you know. And um, he would draw from these guys. And here's, here's the, little, the little ship he would ride in, you know, a little PW-17. And he could get all the angles right, you know, like as it was flying by. You know, like you could see him in there, you know, and and this this is how how the the drawings were done so well, because you know you can get any angle you wanted by making the sculpting model right. And he also had this this idea to make toys. He really wanted to make toys. He wanted to see his stuff made into toys. He never he he'd take it to a toy company in '69, and they looked at him like he was insane. They're like, this is going to scare the children. <laughs> Don't scare the children. <laughs> Go away, Mr. Bodie. And uh, so he just was so ahead of his time. I mean, just, I mean, now, you know, this was a year ago. We, yeah. Wow. A year ago, we got, we got the, we got the toy, you know, and here, here's the original right here. Is that, that was made 50 years ago, you know? Wow. So he he's like, this just happened. I mean, you know, is that still you know, available? Fifty years. Yeah, you can get it through Mind Style. I think I think they they're, they're in China. They do a lot of run English stuff. Um, I I was really excited when you dropped um, the vinyl. I, I ended up getting the the glow in the dark one. I think you sent me one as well. But I I was so excited, and of course I I, I give one to my kid, and I'm like. Yo, where's his hat? He needs his hat. Uh, <laughs> it's lost. Oh, it, your son said that? No, he he lost the hat. Oh on, no! On on one of them. But I I want to talk about this, uh, this re revisiting of your dad, because when, you know, the, it, it particularly in terms of how we saw him. You know, as 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 a culture, right? Graffiti, um, graffiti, graffiti right? Right, because I I personally, you know, yeah, that's, I, we that's have the that's Re and Chino. That was yeah. the first train that ever was recorded that had a Cheech Wizard on it. That was late 90, 1975. I heard it from Re himself. Mm -hmm. He said he he saw it in a comic book. He wanted to do a tribute to my dad. I, I, I'm not sure if he knew he had just passed, or I think he did. And so he put that on the train, and that just spread like like wildfire. You know, you guys, you, you and your brother, and... Yeah. And, and, uh, uh, well, but these guys... Dandy and Scene, and everybody jumped on. Right. These guys in particular, Chino Malo and, and, and Ree, were part of MTA, uh, Mad Transit Artists. Uh, they, were, they were the first ones to, to introduce this. Um, but it, yeah, it spread like wildfire, you know, because a lot of the, you know, TMT crew used to paint him. Um, here are some examples, you know, this, this wow. Kel, Kel was obsessed with, Ch <laughs> I mean, we, we, we all were, my crew, rock stars. And the Shy was into that too, right? Shy? Shy big time. In right. fact, Shy, oh, yeah. Shy and Kaz. Um, Look what I got. Oh, yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Coming through. <laughs> so I'll, I'll share a story about that, that whole car, and I have a picture of it. But I, what I wanted to say about, um, you know, the impact of, of the Cheech Wizard, because it was at a point that, you know, many of us were doing it, and, and again, honing in a whole new skill set of, of cartooning and drawing that line. There's a mm. Baudet line that really kind of fit this kind of graphic style that we were doing uh, with letters uh, and particularly um, and the coloring as well. Um, and of course, as I mentioned, Kel, you know, uh, I, I use him as a, an example because he, he loved painting Bodhi characters. That's a great one, yeah. Um, this is the Kel Futura. Um, and early on in 79, he did the Del Delt Kel Henry and of course, he didn't, Kel did not have those traditional uh, illustration skills. He, for characters. Well, 
probably didn't have the comics in front of him either. I would have. I would guess. No, no, he right. didn't. Like Dondi, Dondi had the books, and he would get right on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that got, that exploded shit, man. He when he when he did that, a bomb went off, you know, and it went worldwide. And but let me ask you something. So, at what point did you become aware that this this whole subculture was um, a, a, adapting your father's work um, to be painted on trains? Well, I didn't know anything about graffiti um, in the seventies and early eighties. I knew nothing. Uh, I mean, I knew some people tagged. I mean, I went to school of visual arts um, for one year. Um, and my first exposure, to be truthful, was uh, Keith Haring. You know, he was just graduating uh, school of visual arts when I came in. And I was like, what's the big deal about this dude? You know, and his, his like, his, you know, stick figures running with a cross and a dog barking. And, and I was on the... I was on the trains and I'm, I could have popped out one of those chalk drawings any day because he was riding the same lines I was. And I, I just like, I don't get it. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it. But he was my first exposure really to like street art artists, you know, because I was a comic guy, you know, I didn't know this whole culture was going on. I was sought out by Don D. Uh, he knew that my mother-in-law had a bodega in uh, state state and third in in brooklyn and she she was one of the first women uh to own her own bodega and run it um and he knew that and so he kept frequenting saying is mark here yet is he come back from california and and she's like he's coming soon and finally we hooked up and when i met dandy he was probably the first um graffiti artist that i really met you know like officially because he sought me out, you know, and we didn't talk about um, about graffiti or going to the arts or anything. He he wanted to know all about my dad. He wanted to know what he was like, how he drew, what he did, what he ate, and uh, we just drew in each other's books. And I thought he was just his fan, you know, comics fan. And he drew me a bus piece, and he drew me some other things, which I was kind of like, wow, that's different. <laughs> and. Uh, you know, so uh, as uh, as time went on, I like around you know earlier than that, I was on you know going to school of visual arts eighty two, and I was on um, it was West twenty twenty third Street uh, station, and I'm waiting, and I see a nonstop go by me, and. I saw Dead Bone Mountain and I saw Cheech Wizard and I saw the lizards like whipping by me and I was like, what the fuck? Happened? What was that? You know, like how did dad get up on this train? And I was blown the fuck away and I was just like, wow. And uh, who who risked their, their freedom or getting hit over the fucking head, you know, in a train yard, you know, to put my dad's stuff up? <laughs> you know, like, the guy's insane, you know, and um, so I, I didn't know who drew that, who, who painted that, you know, I thought it was you, or like later on, like we were talking about it, I thought it might be you or your brother, it might be Shy, could have could have been early enough to be yeah. Shy. Well, Shy and Cause, you know, Shy and Cause did a famous whole car, um, you know, if I go, if I can go back, because this was a just a phenomenal, a phenomenal. Um, oops, I'm going the wrong way. Um, phenomenal night to be a graffiti writer. Uh, uh, when when Kel and Scene were painting this whole car with the Cheech Wizard with the Baudet broad in the middle. Ah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I did not know I could actually zoom in on Instagram here, so that's pretty cool. Awesome. But uh, this night, uh, me, me and Crash painted uh, a whole car with this one Baudet character that was the kind of this little like mutant kid with a big head and big eyes. And then Butch and Case were next to us. And then Kel and Scene painted this. And then Shy and Cos painted. But in the middle of their car was the infamous Cheech Wizard kicking uh, the lizard in the balls, top, ah. top to bottom. 
Wow. I don't think uh, I've seen that. We, 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 we were very hardcore into it. And, and like you said, you get lost in this world. Uh, mm. Like you, you were a child, you were already in it. So like we, we got lost in this world and this, and, and the personas of what was written. Right. Um, and uh, so there was this, this, kind of not just a creative adaptation to to your father's work but those nuanced personas in those characters right um and going yeah. back to to what you had showed me the, the 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 shy piece uh this this was a great project in 1986 called art train and the art train yeah yeah and i, I wish had, i had been part of all that i i just i missed the boat you know like i i was a comic guy i, I wanted to be following my father's footsteps. I didn't know that this thing was going on called graffiti yeah. and street art. Um, I started late, but um, it was really Dr. Revolt and um, Zephyr and you and Scene. And there was a few others that, that got me going. And, you know, I got my feet wet. And, yeah, um, and, and, and as you could see, obviously, it made sense to the aesthetic of the culture. Um, and in this particular project, it was supposed to be a whole car, and I designed it. Uh, it's called Shy. It was a tribute to Shy 147, who, you know, he passed away, and Vaughn, who had passed away. It was a tribute car to both of them, and it was uh, Shy 147 in a Baudet raid. And of course, these are all the characters that your father had, you know, you know, the policeman, we kind of put a do rag on a lizard. Yeah. Um, there's this, all this interaction with, with uh, and also the frog detective at the end next to the Cheech. And, the, you know, uh, and then of course, Futura did one portion of it. Right. In fact, I, I, I and, and, you know, Futura is a dear friend, but I remember like, I thought I had the whole car to myself and I didn't want him on the car because I didn't want to condense this amazing story because it was a personal thing because I wanted to pay homage uh, to your dad. Um, but it ended up being a, a wonderful production. Uh, but also I think it illustrates the love and the admiration this whole culture was having with your father's work. Um, and, and of course, you know, the rest is history because all around the world, people were picking up on this and you brought him back. You brought this back to us. So tell me about this. Tell, tell me, at the, like, when did you decide, you know what, I'm going to pick up the torch? I was never, I, I mean, my mom pushed me away from stuff early on. She said she didn't want me to grow up in a shadow and I, I never saw it as a shadow. I saw it as a, I was embracing my father's life and, and being able to bring him more to his full potential because he didn't have a chance to, to get there. So I felt like I was initially like, uh, I, yeah, I grabbed that torch and kept running with it. You know, unfortunately without him, um, things aren't quite the same, but, but I was able to take it into toys and clothing and, you know, in animation and uh, sneakers. I've got the Puma sneakers, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah. And, and, you know, my mom pushed me off in directions, you know, like I, after Miami Mice, I, I did the Ninja Turtles, you know. Nice. For, and this is why Bruce Lee meets the Ninja Turtles. I, I, I was a big Bruce Lee fan, you know, and, uh, but, but we had, we had a hell of a time you know, doing Shell of the Dragon. Me, uh -huh. me and Kevin and, and Eric Talbot, like I would, I would draw it and and write it, and then and then and then I give it to Kevin, who created the turtles, and and him and Eric Talbot would ink it, and um, and then I moved back east. And I, how you know, how did like, you not get equity in that? That's just a, an enormous fortune that that enterprise. It, I was in ground zero with those guys. So it was great. It was, it's a ride that the, the cartoonists would only dream of, you know? Um, I mean, you know, I, I think this, this here, I don't know if you could see it, but yeah, this was the very first Ninja Turtle licensed thing. It was these little miniatures. And that was the very first product that came out besides the comics. 
and, and Kevin and Pete signed it for me. But that's like ground zero for Ninja Turtle toys. This, this right here. Um, so I was right in there when it was all going on. And to see my friends become millionaires overnight was like, wow. I mean, anything goes, you know? <laughs> yeah. He bought a tank. I mean, his wife bought him a tank, a Sherman, uh, you know, a Stewart, mini Stewart tank from Patton's Army. Then we put paintballs out in the woods. I mean, it was fucking awesome. <laughs> Limos everywhere. It was great. <laughs> right. So, so Mark, you're on, on this kind of um, decision to uh, make this your own, right? It, it is yours. It, it, it is yours in every, every way and every sense of it, uh, both creatively, spiritually, um, and, and inheritance. Well, that, that, um, that picture there was uh, with Coney Island walls. I think it's still there. They gave me the shit spot. I, it was behind the gate. And, and uh, it was raining. And, and I just happened to cruise up, you know, like, went, hey, I saw some guys painting. And they said, oh, it's Baudet, you know, let, we should get him a spot, you know, and like, the, they were already out of money, right? And also, I was like, well, I'm here, you know, I'll paint. And then they gave me the shit spot behind the gate. So I worked with the gate. And when the gate was open, I painted uh, the characters in lockdown. <laughs> and then when the gate closes for the day, they're they're they're, they're in locked for the night. They're in for the night. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's genius. <laughs> it's working with the shit spot, man. <laughs> yeah. So so it's interesting, right? That not only are you you uh, bringing this art, uh, you know, into the future, but also you you pick up a spray can. Right. Mm. You, you start really coming into the culture, being a part of it, integrating yourself um, uh, in, in painting and doing murals and using the spray can uh, amazingly well. Not at first. I, I, I pretty much sucked. I, I, uh, I was very irrita irrita irritated by how many people could do it better than me. <laughs> and I was like, I should be able to do that. I'm a Bodhi, you know, like I should be able to do that. And uh, it was very frustrating because the the cans, you know, were Krylon and Rusto and and I was like painting with a club, you know, and, and I just, I, you know, I didn't know anything about releasing the, the pressure or anything. And, and I was like, how do they do this? You know, like I'm out of control, you know, and, and, and uh, that was in the mid 80s. And my first piece, actually, I have the piece. It's in my in my in my studio here uh of the very first thing i did in spray can art which was my very first piece it was the boat you know the two doors with the motorcycle mm -hmm. and that that uh that piece is right in the other room i actually my friend saved the uh the doors so i i have my very first piece and uh it's the only thing that exists from spray can art besides the black book stuff so i have a piece of that history um but um it was really revolt and um you know that taught me a lot he kind of took me under his wing and we were both comic artists graffiti slash graffiti guys you know and i wanted to be a graffiti guy uh, but i wasn't and um and he taught me technique and then i met stan 153 rest in peace stan yes he became my brother from a different mother we we were peanut butter and jelly, as he would put it. <laughs> <laughs> I miss him, man. Yeah, he he's a legend. Were were you at all surprised when you realized that it wasn't such an it wasn't niche? It wasn't just the subway riders in New York. That it was the world that was uh, in love and embracing, um, you know. Uh, Von Bode's work, the Cheech Wizard, and and here we have a slide with Los Gemios from Brazil. Oh yeah, <laughs> and and you got to collaborate Brothers. with them. Yeah, and oh, check, uh, it out. check it out, check it out. I got the only Los Gemios tattoo in the world done by Los Gemios. Oh wow! They they uh, I hear you. Uh, Octavio wanted a a, a 
a Bodhi character, right? Tattooed by me because I've been tattooing for 25 years. And uh, so I did the piece on him. I said, but you got to tattoo me. And he goes, no, Mark, this is very bad. I don't know how to tattoo. It's very bad. We can, and I say, no, that's the deal. You're going to tattoo me. And I thought he'd, he'd fuck it up. You know, I'm like, look what else Jamal did to me. <laughs> but he fucking did it perfect. <laughs> and I love it. And you guys collaborated one. and did an extraordinarily beautiful mural. Oh, uh, yeah. It's covered now. There's a big building that came up next to it now. So it's you can only see it from about five feet, you know, looking straight up now. But that um, we got it on uh, um, uh, Nick, Nick Francis is doing the book of me. I mean, book, uh, the, the book of Vaughn, I'm sorry, um, is the documentary going on about my dad. And um, and uh, we're time lapsing this so that you'll see the, the building go up over the last year and a half. Wow. So it'll slowly disappear in the film. I, I I love the image because it it you know they they are distinct in their own you know way with their work and everything but uh, you know that this collaborate this embracing how it embraces and 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 sits on the shoulders of the Cheech you know riding on the hat of the yeah, yeah. riding riding on the shoulders of the hat you know that's yeah. what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and let's talk about cobalt because it, uh, I, I, I read that, uh, are you still doing something with Universal around cobalt? We got, we got optioned um, Zack Snyder when he was doing 300 for, with Frank Miller, wanted to do cobalt 60 as a live action film with CGI. And he still wants to do it, but it was, he just, he got so big so quick that he, he went to like the big blockbuster, you know, Batman, right. and Superman and Watchman, all the mans, they got all the mans. Um, and Cobalt was like, kind of got on the back burner, but we did get option money and um, to wait, but um, it's still, they still update my, my information and um, we're hoping he gets back to it. But uh, Cobalt 60 could be uh, an animated TV show or, or, or a movie very easily. It's, it's becoming real. <laughs> you know, like our, our reality, you know, Cobalt with the face mask, mm -hmm. full face mask, always coughing. What, was, there, was there ever a, 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 uh, an interaction between the world of Cobalt and Cheech? Uh, no. No, there wasn't. Uh, these these are very separate places. Um, Cobalt was only my dad did twenty pages of Cobalt sixty story, and um, it was so depressing that my father just ended it, just left it. He tried to get um, some writers to help him out for long the long haul, but um, they all said it was too personal to him, and they didn't know where to go with it. What, why was it so dark? Why was it so heavy? Was it just because it was our future? Yeah, it's what the fuck we're going through right now, a, a, man. A dystopian future. Yeah. <laughs> wear a fucking mask, man. So if you don't wear a mask, this is what you'll look like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you'll have a mug yeah, we're like all that. Headed that way. Can't you see it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. <clears throat> um, I mean, mutants, you know, like genetically deformed people, that's all down the road. It's We're getting there very, very quickly, quicker than I thought, you know? Yeah, but look, if we look at this image, as you say that the, Bo the Bodhi Broads is still quite beautiful and luscious. They stay the same. The rest of us mutate into other shit. Well, you know, it's the hormones in the chicken, man. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's affecting everyone. <laughs> so also, you know, what I like too is that you you got involved with with doing murals. Mm, yeah, and, that's and like you, urban uh, art. Ur Ur urban nation Berlin, right? Yeah, um, yeah, that's right around the corner from the museum in Berlin. I did that a couple of years ago with my friend Lionel, and um, he's a friend of mine from high school. 
he came out there to help me out. And um, man, when, when when I started painting that, I had some German lady, this old German lady screaming at me in German. And I'm like, I, I hadn't even put a line on the wall. I was just getting ready. And she's like, ah, you know, she's like going off. And, and I asked this guy, what, what is she saying? She says, you come here and you put that stuff on the wall. We have to live with it. That's what she's saying. <laughs> and she was really bitter because right around the corner, I won't mention any names, but it said there was like no future. And it had like a skeleton dude reading a book and it was right over a playground, you know? Oh, damn. And, and I'm not going to mention that yeah. any further, but you it, these things have an effect you know like in these little kids you know they they're scared of that stuff man you gotta think of that you know and i and i put something kind of cosmic and fun almost almost like sesame street kind of you know muppet kind of looking thing that invites you in and, and makes you think of the universe and what could be out there and and you know what that lady She'd come by every day until it started getting finished, and then she disappeared. She she come by to yell at me, and 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 uh, because all the kids started coming, and and all the kids are pointing, and their parents are happy and giving me a thumbs up, and you know it was a positive, you know, for the neighborhood. I I got invited, you know, some of the people that lived in those windows would invite me in for food. <laughs> nice, as I'm out in the lift. <laughs> It, it was touching, you know, like you gotta, you know, I try to think of the neighborhood and I try to think of, you know, of things that are positive, you know, um, that they could uplift the neighborhood. In the Tenderloin here, I did a thing with Clark, you know, a few years ago. Um, and uh, and we, we did some painting in the Tenderloin. It's really rough over there. And I, I put mermaids you know, and sexy girls and use pinks and nice blues and, you know, things to calm people down, you know, not scalds and that, you know. Right. <laughs> so, you know, I think it, it makes people go by who are really pissed off and then like, oh, cool. nice. You know, like they'll, for a minute, you'll grab them away and, you know, put them in this place that that's a comfort zone and and uh, maybe a nicer place than they live in you know you know another thing that's interesting mark is that you know there there are festivals and you know, people you know when they paint you know the Baudet festival to to you know writers come out to paint and i mean globally i don't think any there's not one country i have not visited that i didn't find a bodhi it's amazing man <laughs> I, my dad never got to see that. You know, I get to see that. Yeah. It's, it's really, it's touching. I've, I've been brought to tears many times, you know, because I'm like, dad, you see this? <laughs> I know you see this because I'm seeing it. <laughs> He's probably orchestrating some of this. And yeah, you know, like it's real shit, man. And, uh, so, yeah. Mark, you know, this is my last slide, but I, 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 if you have something to share with us, please do and show and tell. Okay. Um, I did see some questions from folks. Uh, I'll take a question that I saw earlier on the first part from uh, Chi, uh, a friend of mine. And this is, this is the million dollar question that's been asked since day one. And, uh, and I remember uh, in one of the magazines and one of, one of the comic books thinking, oh my God, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen where the Cheech takes off his hat and we get ah. to see what he looks like, mm -mm -mm. you know? He does. And and he's like this m morbid looking uh, character. No, he never showed his face. Um, Cause if you look at the creator in the eye, right. you go blind. Right. And that, that was the joke. But the creator is Vaughn, you see. Right. So, because just when he gets he to that point, his hat and all know, the characters can't can't deal, you know. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's presumed that he's morbid and 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 freaky and. No, he's Vaughn. He's Vaughn, you know, the squat version of Vaughn. That the part that Vaughn never was, you know, like Vaughn was, you know, he's like charismatic and sweet and yeah. loving and and uh, and Cheech was harassable and you know. Yeah. 
disheveled and, you know, and, you know, mean and, you know, and bawling broads and, you know, and, and just, I mean, so it was his alter so the ego. Cheech, I mean, the Cheech was the alpha male um, and your father wasn't the alpha male. Exactly. And so that's, that's the secret. And, you know, um, I was the, the lizard, you know, like I was the lizard apprentice and still am. I had a dream, you know, where when I was doing the book of me, I was I was doing the intro as Cheech Wizard. And this is an example of how my father still um, still communicates. Um, I was reading writing as, che as Cheech Wizard. And then it seemed fine. It seemed funny and in character. Um, but something didn't seem right. And then that night I went to bed and I had a really strong dream. My father came to me and he goes, Mark, as you are now and as you were then, I am Cheech Wizard. You are the lizard, right as the lizard. Mm. And I was like, and don't make me come back down here to straighten you out again. <laughs> And when I woke up, I was so relieved. <laughs> I, like, I got, I got the okay, you know. And and I wrote as the lizard. And it was so natural. It's just like, you know, right. <laughs> it's just like oh, I didn't even have to try, you know. Like it's just natural, you know. It comes down and he edits shit, man. It's amazing. <laughs> I love it. Uh, <laughs> we got a request with if someone wants to see the the jacket behind you. Ah. Yeah, it was probably my first jacket I did. Um, wow! It, you know, I, I did it with the, uh, the, you know, with the with the uh, the the canvas, you know, the canvas jacket, and you know, you did, you know, I was I was taking pointers from some of the graffiti artists here, out out here in the Bay Area when I did it. But, what year? Um, what year did you you paint this? Eighty six or eighty five, I think. Wow. And it was my first jacket I ever painted. And, um, you know, and I used the gesso on the letters. And and that's the two comics I was working on at the time, Miami Mice and the, and the Cobalt. Nice. Yeah. Um, the folks out there that are, that are uh, joining us, uh, please feel free to ask Mark some questions. Uh, you're getting all these. I want to share some of the things that people are saying. Love your passion, Mark. It's infectious. Um, Oakland Terminal. Woo! Um, Air, uh, Arrow from Bristol, uh, England. I, I imagine him being well cheeky. Um, and uh, do you have a lizard assistant? <laughs> uh, no, I no, most of them uh, died. <laughs> no, I, I, no, no, I, 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 and now and then I have people I work with and uh. You know, I just I just worked on an animated thing for two years, and uh, and my animator passed away, mm. unfortunately. Yeah, Mark tell us about this because this was very exciting. Uh, you you were working on some AR, uh, yeah, some VR AR stuff. Mm. Yeah, it was like almost there. We almost had the Apple. I mean, we went to like computer, you know, conventions and were boggling people's minds. I mean, we we were like doing 3D pop off the book, like pop-ups. When you open the book on your phone, Cobalt pops up and starts fighting, you know, like, wow. it was amazing. And, but all the animation got, were, had the passwords to my, my friend and he just suddenly got ill and, and passed away overnight. I mean, I was talking to him the same day, he was fine. Just one of those things, man. And all, all his passwords and everything went with him. No, and no way to hack we that, right? We lost it all except for clips, you know, got some clips. Uh, all Natural 777 asks, any drawing advice you can give on character development? Oh, well, yeah, let me tell you. Um, I mean, for instance, you know, we got Doom Marble here. Like, Doom Marble is, well, like, this is five ply and this is doom marble doom marble was um is is hired from the galactic bank to make sure that um that uh the bank is paid on loans and uh 
So Five Ply has his time tower and he's leasing it. And Doom Marble makes sure that people pay Five Ply his money. And so, like, I have one of my chosen, one of my prized possessions here is, uh, is this little box here. And inside it, we have the Doom Marble. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small doom marble. <laughs> but it's kind of, you have to get it back into the box. Make sure it doesn't, you know, escape. <laughs> but um, you have to believe these things are real. And that's what I would say is like, make the comics real make make um in your head like you first before you even get to the comic or the or the character you go and you make the planet you know my father would even go into the universe around it and you make the planet then you then you go into the planet and you name the mountains and the rivers and the streams and the and the um and all the all the components the towns the cities the you know, name they have all buildings and businesses, and then you populate them with characters, and you give them. Like I got a a pack here somewhere. I don't know if I I have it right up. Um, yeah, maybe maybe it'd be harder to find than I thought. But um, it's it's a it's an idea pack, and and it has like lists of problems that the the, the 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 characters have you know like like one character doesn't have an arm another one you know what kind of what kind of disorders they have what kind of religious beliefs they have you make these lists for each character and then it helps write for that character that character will start speaking for itself and and then and a lot of those characters you know like Gangrene the bunny mummy, you know, it's like <laughs> I love the dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that guy. Kitty, <laughs> he deserves his own his own cartoon show, but he's just a dead rabbit, you know. He's just a dead rabbit wrapped up like a, a mummy, you know. And all he says is things like want, need, must have. <laughs> <laughs> it's a basic basic you know drive in life. <laughs> But but uh, he gets fucked with a lot, you know, like the other characters because he's not very, very fast, you know. Uh, the other characters fuck with him, and you know. So this is such great advice. I I, I appreciate you sharing that with us. Uh, Brand Dong twenty one forty five asks, what paints do you use for your matte paintings? Oh, uh, you know, I bit all that shit from uh, Doctor Revolt, you know. <laughs> Yeah, doc, the doctor, the good doctor. Yeah, he, he he was so good at it, you know. Like, and I was like, I wanna, how's he do that? Mm. So I'd I'd like really study what he was doing. And what is he using markers and or, or and paintbrush or just markers? You know, I no markers, no. The markers will pick up the the ink um, and pollute your colors. Um, what I do is I'll pin up the I'll pin up the the map uh, onto a, a piece of masonite or whatever and then I project the image onto it trace it off with a sharpie or whatever or a marker and then attack it with acrylics mm. uh, and one pass you know like don't yeah. like you'll see you'll see in my I do a lot of uh, quick time movies on my Instagram and uh, and it it, it, actually, I would love to be able to slow down quick time because I'm I'm too fast for some of that, you know. And it and it goes by like thirty seconds, and you know I'll usually do like a piece like that in one sitting, you know. Like it takes me a couple hours, two three hours, um, but it goes by in thirty seconds. Um, but I'll do I'll do all that in in acrylics first with some basic rendering, and then I'll take either a spray can like see-through spray can, like Montana Espectro, or airbrush. And 
and tone it and back to shadow, do the shadows and stuff and tone it, bring it together with the airbrush or the spray can, and then go back in the highlights, highlight everything. And then the final is just taking like a paint marker and putting the outline on it that, that was originally there and, and done, you know, like it's so quick. It's like, it's an attack process. I, I Got attack it. them. If you've worked the map too much, you're going to put holes in it or it'll start breaking down. So you got to use a hair dryer to keep drying it as you, as you paint, because if you keep hitting that, that surface is going to go, you know, it's going to get too saturated. So when I, when I go into that mode, I'm in attack mode and, you know, you usually can get, get these things done in a couple of hours, two or three hours. I have another question for you. Do you still visit your childhood home and that place on the hill where Cheech lived? I did for the, for the, the, the book of Vaughn, for the documentary. We've been filming that for two years now. Nick Francis is just perfect for the film. I mean, I've had other people approach me to do a, 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 a documentary on my father and I just felt like one of them came off on a sexual side and wanted to know more about his cross-dressing and, and another one wanted to just be a hip hop graffiti film. And I was like, no, nah, that's, he never knew about that. You know, he never knew about, about the graffiti scene that would, that would love his stuff so much. And so it wasn't appropriate, you know? Yeah. But Nick gets it, you know, he's like, He's a creative dynamo, man. We got to do, do, do go guys, deep into this, you know. Do, do you dive into that part of his secret life of mysticism and sexuality and, and how he actually passed? Do I? In, do I in, for the documentary. Oh, we'll touch on it. Of course, you got to touch on it because it's part of it, you know. It's part of his death, you know, like the, the, the yin yang, the male, female, the, the, the fight within himself to be accepted as a woman but then very much loving being a man um he just he wasn't transgender he was he was a, a closet queen and and he was he was forced i mean it was hard to go shopping with him you know like the way he was dressed he was dressed i saw prince dressing like that at the you know at, at, at the, the music awards in like, you know, in like a satin hoodie, you know, with jewelry and makeup. And I was like, my father was doing that 20, 30 years before that, you know? Yeah. And it was hard, man. I, I could imagine. Upstate New York, you know, yeah. like people were homophobic. They didn't yeah, know what yeah. to think of him, man. It's very, very Republican up there for sure. And I, I was like, you know, I was just admire him so much, I, you know, I mean, so you accepted him any way he any shape or form. Always, yeah. always. I thought he was the coolest thing on earth. I have, a, I have a question here that uh, people want to know. Some a Crumb USN crew wants to know where can people buy Bode merchandise. Well, it, it's always coming out. I mean, I, I try to put out something every month on my Instagram or whatever. But the best place really is to get the back issues and stuff is on eBay or. Mm -hmm go to comic book conventions, which don't exist right now. Um, uh, but you yeah, can get you to, have to go online and, and seek it out. Yeah, and search them out, you know, search yeah. out the ones you want, um, you know, because because they're hard to find. Um, I have a problem, you know, like I, I want to do the big Bodie coffee table book with the erotica stuff and all the all the big book, you know, and I, I can't get the publishers to like just shell out the money to so that I can stop working and, and, and work on that, yeah. you know, like, it's almost becomes like, I'll lose my house, you know, if, yeah, yeah. if, it's a, it's if a I big, work big, on a project. A big investment. And uh, to, to that point, um, uh, Savage Zam Zombie R asks, when is the Sunspot trade paperback coming out? Hmm. Oh, well, the, I just did uh, for issue 300 of Heavy Metal. I did the uh, you know you, you, you flashed on it. It's the mm. it's the new the new edition of Sunpot and uh, in in the Cobalt the the, the Co Cobalt Beautiful. 19. Yeah, Cobalt 19. I wanted to do like you know 
my my inspiration really was was like zero gravity sex you know like a, i just wanted to like draw those crazy poses and wonder what it's like to be in space station Bodhi and being having sex with my wife up there in the uh <laughs> in, in the space station you know this is what i do at night <laughs> <laughs> Le people shape uh, Oakland terminal tell this, Mark tell Mark to strap it to the roof when he comes to visit me tell what tell Mark to strap it to the roof when he comes to visit me <laughs> yeah man I miss those people man admit but um uh you know so anyway uh Cobalt's coming out, uh, uh, you know, they just told me, they broke it up, like I only doing, like some of my dad's uh, unseen published, uh, un unpublished uh, pencils and stuff for Sunpot, never seen before. It's gonna be an issue of, of heavy metal, 300, 301, and 302, it's gonna have Bodhi stuff mm -hmm. in each issue, starting this month, the end of this oh. month. So, so that's the newest thing I've done in comics in a while. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, it just it starved to death if I, <laughs> if I did comics all the time. I, but I, I look, Mark, I admire that you are picking up where his dreams left off, you know, where, where in terms of uh, making his work accessible, available, and in different mediums, um, you know, it, 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 you, you have a, a, a global audience watching and waiting. Uh, one of the things I, I here, here's a childhood uh, fantasy. One of the things that I wish uh, somebody would have made, I, I thought I would make it myself, but a, a Cheech Wizard uh, or Lizard Halloween costume set. <laughs> well, yeah, but you know, I've always fantasized about making a cosplay Cheech, yeah. you know, but the thing is, to do it right, you have to do it out of foam rubber and you got to right. start from the legs up, you know, like the legs have to be those big puffy cheech legs, you know, mm -hmm. and like, and then it, it can't just be somebody in, you know, in, in tights, you know, with a hat, which is, has been the case in the, in the past. So if you're going to do it, you got to do it right. You brought something up interesting in terms generationally right because cosplay is such a big thing uh, generationally are, are younger kids uh, you know finding you oh um, yeah yeah man it's, it's it's perpetual i don't know you know it's like it's never gonna go away i really feel like long after we're all said and done i i think cheech is still gonna be popping around the planet you know like i don't you know he's gonna be popping off man <laughs> you can't get rid of that guy <laughs> i'm uh, Humble Art Collector asks, are you going to do a limited edition print? I, I, like I said, I, I do a lot of that stuff. I got, you know, I've got, I've got stuff built. I mean, I got a flat files built into my wall over here. And it is filled with prints that didn't sell. Or, you know, I mean, I'm always doing something new. So just mm -hmm. keep, keep on me on my Instagram. And, you know, I'm always up to something every month. I you know, got to pay my bills and you know, I come up with, you know, pins, you know, doing some app by the dancing elephant does like, you know, little pit cheech pins and, mm -hmm. and, you know, and like, you know, it's a friend of mine and friend of revolts and uh, this guy, Perry, and, um, and we've been doing stuff together. I mean, it's every month, it's something different, you know, it's like, of course, and, you know, t-shirts, you know, one year, one month, it was a t-shirt like this. And then we got AR t-shirts ones where he actually kicks in the balls when you use your phone and well you, you know what i'm excited about i'm i'm getting my 3d printer soon my my resin printer and uh today when i saw the uh the 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 uh the animation i was like oh it would be cool to 3d print uh, a cheech you know yeah uh, you 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 are you happen to be at, at with all this at a very interesting time where uh, technology can open up so many channels for you. You know, like you were saying, the AR, the VR, uh, the animations, uh, the 3D printing, especially uh, because that allows you to do uh, you just constantly manufacture and produce these these objects if you have the 3D uh, 
uh, the 3D uh, modeling. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's super cool. Uh, you know, vinyls are great. Uh, they're super expensive to make. Um, and they're beautiful. But I think resin printing right now can, you know, be a, a really great solution. This is a, this is a run DMC Cheech that I'm working on. And uh, I I thought, you know, well, use the, the, the crossover, the hip hop crossover. And, I love know, it. Have them with the shell, the shell shoes, the shell toes, and everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. baby. And and you know, um, so so. That, so you do you do that independently? Does Adidas? Does this ever get to to them at all? Uh, I'm not I'm not using their logo or nothing. You know, I mean, no, it's a it, it could possibly be a collab. You know, it's a parody. I, it's a parody. Right? Oh, it's a parody. Um, yeah. So you can get away with a parody. You just can't make a, you know. Don't make a job out of it, you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> move on <laughs> before they I'll, come and get I'll, you. I'll, I'll share. I'll share something with you. Uh, years ago, I was in London uh, for the Red Bull BC One, and uh, I happened to have, have been uh, invited over to uh, the Puma offices, and I, I went over to to Puma, and they were excited to meet me. And they're like, oh yeah, oh shit, Mare's here. Yeah, he, he's gonna love this. He's perfect. Yeah, he's good. They're, they're all buzz about me being there for some reason. And I wasn't even sure. I was just like, all right, whatever. And they were dropping the cheech? They were dropping the cheech. That's they how saw... you got that shit? Yeah, because they saw pictures. <sighs> they saw pictures of, of my work. Uh, and they were like, oh, we want to show you these. What, what size are you? Oh, I was just like, lucky. yo, are you crazy? You know, you know, I was supposed to get 12 of all those jackets, you know, like samples. Yeah. And they gave me two of those. Wow. I, like, I got, what? I got that my was the hoodie. best one, man. That was the best one, the Cheech Wizard hoodie. Yeah. Oh, man. Beautiful, you know? beautiful details inside. I, was, I, think, I think it was so nice that all, that all the, the, the people who worked there, you know, scooped them up. Yeah. You know, there was only three hundred made or something. It, it, it was phenomenal, and 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 they were bugging out because they my response was so emotional, and they had no idea because this is triggering my childhood, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, and, 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 they couldn't and, have given feel better guy, man. I tell you. Yeah, it it, it, it was <laughs> absolutely awesome, and the the sneakers. What did I do? I I gave them to a friend of mine, and in fact, I'm going to ask for them shits back. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, a lot of the, the, the shoes that they did weren't the highest of quality, um, but the Cheat Wizard 50th anniversaries were on leather, and those were really nice. Those and were nice. We wear them, and they stay nice. What what I loved about the, the hoodie, the zipper had the little metal Cheech. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah, you, you know, like, they came at me. They were like, we're doing this graffiti-esque, you know, licensing thing where we're going to have graffiti artists on, on our Puma gear. And we're interested in getting some of your characters on the, on the Puma gear. And uh, and I was like, and I was like, yeah, well, what kind of numbers are we talking? They're like, oh, we're just doing it for mo promotion. Most of the artists are doing it for promotion because it's a good crossover. And I was like, who am I talking to? Like oh this is Puma International. I'm like oh no no uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> no get out you know like you, you guys got like, pockets. Talk to me yo talk to me again some other time you know when you when you when you find some money all right and then <laughs> they they called I, up a, a day later they're like oh, I, I want to get this question in because we 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 have a couple minutes left and I oh, did not okay. I did not know this. Um, Oakland Terminal's asking, what about that cool story with the Beastie Boys, Bode, Bodie? Do you see how I say Bode, uh, Bodie? I know. Bodak. It's because of my father put the long E over the E, you know? Right. And then back in the day, they didn't have the long E when you type it up, right? You're right. So it be, it, on the typewriter, it go, Bode, bank, you know? And so people started calling it Bode. What, what uh, just uh, a little bit of a diversion, but... The, his background, that the name Bodhi, what's the heritage of that? Um, it's it's a river, the Bodhi River in Alsace, Alsace, you know, in Alsace. France. Yes, 
So he, he's, you have French lineage. I guess French German. Yeah, French so it's German. on a border of French and Germany. Right. But um, I was, you know, people, people bug me too much. I tell them it uh, comes from bidet, <laughs> the bidet. All right, really quickly, tell me about this. <laughs> tell me about this Beastie Boy uh, Bodhi collab. Oh well, they did. Uh, they did. Uh, you know the Sure Shot video, and they're like, "Hey man, they mentioned your dad." It was like, "I'm a born Bodhi, like a chief wizard, never quit." It, so what to listen? And and I was all good with it. I was like, happy, you know, and stuff. And then I saw the video, and I'm like, "Fuck it, Cheech Wizard on their fucking video!" And I was like. You know, and like Ad Rock's going, yeah, you know, like, and there's Cheech, man. And it's like, you can't use Cheech without permission, man. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's our bread and butter, man. And so, you know, like I, 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 I threatened to sue the, uh, the manager, you know, mm -hmm. and then Ad Rock called me and cooled me down and said, oh man, we love Bo Day, you know, what then, like, you know, like, we'll get you into the concerts and, you know, like, eh, 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 eh. and like, you know, like, hook it up, you know, you do stuff for extra large and you make six figures because we make more money on that than we do at our, our albums. And, and it's like, and we didn't, we, you know, I did a bunch of drawings for them and they used them for backstage passes and uh, never got paid. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. There was some oh, deep pockets there, but I thought that was going to end on a happy pockets. note. <laughs> I thought Throw that was good. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Mark, um, we're going to wind this down. Uh, as you know, we could go on and on about this. Uh, I really, on behalf of the Museum of Graffiti here in Miami, man, and, and of course, fans around the world and uh, friends past and present, thank you uh, for sharing uh, your story, uh, your, your family's work. <laughs> the Cheech, uh, he lives. Yeah, she, she says hi. Thanks all everybody out there and keep it real, keep safe. And, um, you know, so we can travel again. That'd be nice. <laughs> keep it safe, baby. Keep Yo, it what's up? What's up with the Cheech Wizard mask, though? Like I really don't want to embrace this man as like a fashion. I, I want it to go away so bad. Yeah. But too many people are like eating COVID sandwiches and shit, man, and <laughs> breathing on each other, man. Eh, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to embrace it. Gotcha. I want it to go away so I can go visit my family back east, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, brother, you know, travel with a light heart and, uh, <laughs> and wings at your back, man. And, uh, well, we'll catch up offline. And, um, you know, I want to thank everybody that joined us for this, this two-hour talk. Um, <laughs> And um, it, it, it really means a lot to me uh, that you, oh. you took this time. You're perfect. You're perfect. I mean, you know. we, we, we have a, we gel and it's dynamic yeah. and we go way back. And I was looking forward to this and it was really just everything I wanted it to be. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, Carlos. We'll, we'll catch up later. Thank you, everyone. Right, people. Uh, just oh, know, yeah. everyone, that tomorrow, uh, Crazy Legs from the Rocksteady crew will yeah. be joining us. So that's going to be an exciting conversation. <laughs> somebody, else, somebody I go back with as well. Oh, man, that's going to be awesome. And, you know, we had Doze on yesterday. Yeah. And of course, he talked about it, about Yvonne's work as well. So listen, uh, here's the countdown, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. My man, thank you. Ladies.